the chosen one. As that clip implies, Pixar for me was meant to be the chosen one. It was meant to be the next breakthrough game that would bond and bring families together playing it like Minecraft used to back in the day. It was meant to be the best building block game out there. Taking elements from Minecraft, Portal Knights, Terraria and of course Ark Survival Evolved and mixing them all into a friendly, super cute, colourful, wonderful open sandbox game. Unfortunately what we did get was a cash grab, tech demo, whatever you want to call it, Pixar has failed miserably but is intent on pushing on, releasing brand new DLC when it releases for all consoles in the near future. So come with me as we discuss and dissect everything to do with Pixar, its troubled beginnings, months of inactivity and now paid DLC for a game that should many people feel should never have been put on sale. It's the Access Show, let's go. Now, I told you guys about Pixar back way back when in January of this year and I said to you guys it would be released in the next few months. In fact, I went back last year and told you guys I was one of the first YouTubers to give you news of his existence. When it launched, many people assumed it was going to be a cash grab and it looks like they were damn right. We're going to be going into them reasons, but first let's cover the history of Pixar so far. Releasing on Steam and Xbox One at the same time, Pixar launched pretty well considering. On PC particularly, it ran okay considering it was an early access game. There was a lot of hype generated from all the ARK YouTubers jumping on the bandwagon, desperate for some new content since ARK had been a little bit slow. Mixed into the fact that a lot of ARC tubers used to be Minecraft tubers and you had a perfect recipe, or so we all thought. It turns out the game definitely looked better on the outside than when you was actually playing it. Buggy, messy, really really taking the core engine and gameplay from ARC but not fixing any of the problems and just putting a micro block shell on it. Pixar did seem to have some more interesting ideas, adding zombies to the mix, more fantasy creatures, as well as some controversial things like only having tames for 60 minutes or so. That plan was jettisoned after community feedback really made it clear that they wanted to be able to keep their tames much longer. When Pixar launched, it was meant to be 80% complete and only another 20% of worth of actual work was going to be going into it to fix and finish the game. This seemed quite incredible, but they seem to have kept to their word. In their eyes, the game is ready to release. Now, there's still a few conflicting reports. We've still got some dates listed as October. I've got more concrete date of late November. Pixar will be releasing on the Nintendo Switch, Xbox One and the PS4 completely full game, no early access. So how are they able to do this and what is the coup behind it? Well, the developers said it all along they really wanted a short gestation time and as they stated, the game was 80% complete when it came into early access on Xbox and Steam. They said they wanted to turn it around in six to eight months and they seemed to be true to their word. But the game is incredibly buggy still. There are an incredible amount of problems still plaguing it. It's gonna take some phenomenal update to really get it into place for late November release. Alongside that info that got given out during a presentation to media at Tokyo Game Show of this year, we also learned that there's gonna be some new DLC. Now this isn't something that new, the developers have said all along that DLC would be available. I've done videos talking about the DLC and I stress to you guys that that's the way they was gonna implement new dinosaurs. You would get new biomes and the dinosaurs would spawn in them biomes. In a way, it's a bit like Ark Survival Evolved's Season Pass. You do get a whole new arc, but you obviously get the brand new creatures that come with that arc. You can see from this picture, the DLC is called Skywood, and it's going to have a various new biomes added to it. These biomes will just slot onto what you've already got. You'll basically load up your world, and they'll be available if you have actually got the DLC. Chen Lao Island, White Sand Forest, Flash Ridges, Twilight Forest, and Mysterious Valley. Now the five biomes might sound good, but the next lot is pretty controversial. New construction elements, tech beast doors, monster doors, trap doors, foundations and building materials to withstand more damage from enemies. New tech weapons, armor and tools, tech generators, feed troughs, lamps, sleeping capsules, field shields, portals, cloning machines to provide a new special capabilities. This is where it gets more spicy. You're basically paying to win now with these items. DLC in Ark 5 Evolved has always been a bit controversial, but at least it felt like you got money for your buck and a lot of that content you could spawn in on single player. We don't know if that's going to be the same case for Pixar. Now there's no price yet, but even at a minuscule price, I'd resent paying for DLC right now. Pixar seems to be doing something similar, but with a lot less content. 
By the looks of things here, we're getting three wyverns added to it, a tapiara, some sort of moth, and four bone dinosaurs. Now, considering these bone dinosaurs are skins in Ark Survival Evolved, and the tapiara is part of the main game, it really does feel like you're not getting a lot of value for whatever money they're going to charge. We don't know how much they're charging for the DLC. It may be incredibly cheap, it may be really expensive. What I do know is though that again, these tech items were all available in the main game of Ark at no extra cost. There is a couple pieces here that may have been included in DLC that were unlocked if you complete the DLC. But for the most part, it's all coming directly from that game. So I know this isn't Ark Survival Evolved, but nevertheless, it is taking elements from that game. You would expect that it would keep some of the core stuff, like having the core creatures and core items. Tech tier is the end game result. If you don't know about Pixar and it's the first time you're hearing about it, then this is what you're striving to get. Just like Ark Survival Vault. So not the best of looks. We knew DLC would come and I'm not too surprised by the creatures being added or the biomes. That's exactly what they've said and I reported on this first. But it still really feels like they're rehashing content and really not going out there and putting fresh new content into the game. This Skyward DLC is meant to launch with the full release or very soon afterwards. And obviously it's going to be some sort of little incentive for people to actually go out there and buy the game. So maybe you're a diehard fan of Pixar. Well done to you and the other person that's watching this video. Because the frequently the most people that comment on these videos are very unhappy customers with Pixar. And for good reason. The multiplayer servers on Xbox are absolutely dead. You'll be lucky to find more than 100 players across 40 or odd servers. Particularly on Xbox, Pixar really did take the piss out of the people playing it. Considering it's quite an expensive title, right now in the UK you can buy Pixar for £21 off the Xbox Live Store. But for a physical copy edition of the game, you're going to be looking at nearly double the price for it. £40. Game is basically the GameStop of the UK. It's the number one game seller out there and you, as you can see, it's double the price of what it was, £44.99. Considering the early access has been quite short and there really hasn't been any content added to the game in that period, that is an absolute diabolical liberty. Normally when you buy a game in early access, you're buying into the fact the game may be buggy and it's going to have content added over time. You'll be able to shape that content, give feedback and implement how that game turns out. That's the really positive side of things. Generally, most times it's about bug testing, making sure the game's stable, getting people to play it and try it, and taking very small amounts of feedback and utilizing it. Pixar couldn't even do that. We've literally only had one or two updates since the game came out. It took them nearly two and a half months to add multiplayer on the Xbox One. All the while Steam had multiplayer from pretty much the get-go. There seems no low that Pixar won't go to in becoming the most scummiest game made out there. Snail Games are the parent company that have made this and they are also the parent company that hold the rights to Ark Survival Evolved. Sitting at a two and a half stars on the Xbox program and not much better on Steam, Pixar really did flop hard. But there are still people playing the game. When Pixar launched it hit a high of 14,000 players. For anyone else that would be absolutely amazing scores. To get that type of people playing the game it means so many people went and bought this. But within two months it lost three quarters of its fan base. Another three months and it lost pretty much 95% of the players playing the game. Right now it's hovering around the 200 to 300 player mark every day. Believe it or not on Steam that's not too bad compared to some games. And when you delve deeper into it and actually look at the times that people are playing, it's clear to see it's a family game as around 2 to 4 o'clock every day is when Pixar gets the most numbers of players. This usually falls in line obviously with kids getting out of school. So the game's not meant for me, it's not meant for adults, it's meant for younger fans of Ark Survival Evolved who maybe saw their parents, their brothers, their sisters playing the game but weren't allowed to play it because technically Ark is a teen or mature game. So when you're selling your game and you're marketing it towards kids, you really maybe should think about how much you charge for it and whether or not DLC is really appropriate. So, doubling the price out of Early Access, even though Early Access gave absolutely hardly any content. Out of all the creatures that were available in the game when it launched, they've only added two creatures as far as I know to the game since then. A fawny lizard and a cave hyena. And since then there has been no other creatures added. Now I'm not going to sit here and say the game hasn't had any updates or any fixes, it indeed has. And they finally added the multiplayer as I said earlier to Xbox two and a half months after promising it. During that time Pixar's communication really just wasn't there. They went weeks without a response on Twitter, only responding to PC questions or only promoting stuff that was happening on PC. 
Even as recently as 14th September, they went out there to suggest they hadn't abandoned the game. We believe it's necessary for all lovers and naysayers of the game to know that we have never abandoned Pixar. You could have fooled me. They also announced around the same time brand new content coming to the game. In terms of new content, it was more fixes and adjustments to the core gameplay, rather than any extra additional features. There were a few additional features added, but nothing to really write home about. Just ways to keep track of your dinosaurs and your creatures more. Undoubtedly, some of this technology may have come from Arc Mobile, which has also been doing similar jobs with its content. Pixar opened up their modern community and they offered rentable servers recently. Suffice to say, this news didn't go down too well and there hasn't been that many takers of the game. The thing is, despite all that negativity I've just spoken about, despite giving you a rundown of poor implementation, poor launching, poor communication, it still looks like Pixar is going to find an audience. With it coming out available on Nintendo Switch, on PS4 as well, there's going to be a brand new surge of people trying to pick this game up. Retailing at a full price game, pretty much nearly the same price as Ark Survival Evolved, maybe slightly cheaper, it really beggars belief that we are getting this reskin, rehashed, unoptimized game put out there. Now I'm not talking about Ark, of course I'm talking about Pixar. Now content creators like myself aren't getting away with it guilt free. I personally really went ham because I honestly thought this was going to be something pretty exciting, something melding the best elements of Ark, the best elements of Minecraft and delivering something I really wanted to try and play. But overhype from me and other content creators desperate for any type of new content really did probably lead to a lot more people buying this game than maybe they should have. But once I saw the development of it was just so utterly shit I stopped doing content on it. Stop defending them and went on the attack stressing don't buy this game. This will be the second video where I'm stressing to people don't buy Pixar, it really isn't worth your time. And I will stress again, there are a bunch of games out there that are much better suited and your kids will enjoy much more than Pixar. Or if you was playing it just for yourself, go back to playing Ark Survival Evolved on Minecraft, you'll definitely have a much better experience. Portal Knights had a long gestation with updates from PC to console this year, in fact it was over a good 4 or 5 months nearly, but it is doing remarkably well and it's got a lot of choice in what you can do in the game. Creative mode, all sorts of adventures, taking on bosses and of course the block building aspect. Portal Knights is probably the number one choice and recommendation. I tell you guys, if you're going to be picking a game up for your kids, pick up Portal Knights rather than Pixar. If you want something a little bit more docile and a little bit more friendly, then Slime Rancher is another fantastic game. If your kids really like Pokemon, they really like the idea of farming and collecting different types of slimes, there's loads of ventures to be had running around the Slime Rancher world, trying to get the exclusive ones, breeding with them, and multiplying and making mega bucks. Absolutely, definitely a really high recommendation for me if you've got young ones particularly who really want to pick up a new game. And finally, Staxels isn't a bad game either. More on the farming side of things rather than adventuring and maybe taking on enemies, it's certainly still a very cute and block building game you'll enjoy. Of course, there's other games as well like Dragon Quest Builders, but that doesn't have multiplayer. And of course, the age old favourite of Minecraft. But you get the idea. There are a bunch of games out there you can let your kids play that they get more enjoyment out of than Pixar. The thing is, some people have said their kids really love Pixar, and I can see why. It's got so much in it in terms of a kid's point of view. But when you compare it up against what it came from, being Ark Survival Evolved, it really lacks some of the stuff that was in that game. I am going to be more fair though. I'm doing this on the basis of how much it costs right now, the fact they've announced new DLC which is going to cost them more money. I'm giving you fair warning of what this game currently is. But I would be unfair if I didn't take a look at it when it actually is fully released. And so that's what I'm going to do in a review. When the game officially comes out, guessing around the end of November, I will take a very good in-depth look at the game and give more of an updated impression. But just had to let everyone know the progress and the basically story of Pixar. Snail Games, Wildcard, whoever made it, they really let the side down with this one. Doubling the price for absolutely no reason that I can see whatsoever adding DLC for content that should be in there in the first place, and an early access period where they just didn't offer any content and really kept their fans really ill-informed. If you disagree with me about Pixar, anything I've said, pop it in the comment section down below. If I get any more information about the pricing of the DLC, and like I said, a firm concrete release date of it, I will let you guys know. But mainly, again, just as a warning to anyone else that might be thinking of picking it up on another platform like the PS4 or Nintendo Switch, not to bother. 
Pixark really should be called Pixars. I am Joe Plays Games. This has been an Axis show taking a look at the Pixark story. Don't forget to like, and I'll see you right back on another one very soon.